Hello, everyone, and welcome in to all beautiful souls out there. It's your favorite grief and burnout coach, Princess Millens, and you're listening to the Restore My Soul podcast, the podcast that helps women push through grief and burnout so that they can experience health in every aspect of life. In this space, you will hear personal stories, practical information, and expertise from myself along with my special guests. We do not offer medical advice, but women can learn to heal by creating a mindset to grow past their grief using biblical principles. No matter if the loss is from death or divorce, there is hope for restoration. So let's push through grief together, one episode at a time. It has been said that mental strength is really important because you either win or lose in your mind. Well, that's a powerful statement and it speaks to the authority that we have to either have a strong mind or a weak one. Well, why is this important in the area of grief? It's because our mental strength can either help us or it can hinder us from being able to deal with our situations in a healthy way, especially when we're grieving. I initially didn't understand this until I began to reflect on my own life and how I was able to get through some things successfully, but others not so much. So in this episode, I wanted to give some practical information, some personal experience and life application about resetting our mindset so that we will be able to withstand our challenges now and even prepare for the next obstacle that we may have to face. Let's go. A lot has been written about the concept of the mind and developing mental strength for greater success. And there's a lot of things out here, right? With regard to the law of attraction and mastering the mind and developing good habits to last us a lifetime. But really developing these practices consistently over time is quite difficult, especially in the face of grief and burnout and the things, the difficult times that we go through. It's especially difficult when faced with modern day challenges, which seem sometimes to be designed to drain away our energy. So what type of things that drain our energy? That could be social media, that can be Wi-Fi, that could be bills and expenses. It can be broken relationships, our environment, smartphones, alcohol, the list goes on, right? But developing a strong mindset entails consistent practice over a prolonged period of time. And it requires a sense of practicality, I believe, and discipline that is all too often forgotten. And I think it would be a mistake to think that this process, this process of developing a strong mindset would immediately alleviate the pain of your situation. And I know it personally, it takes time, but if we seriously commit to developing our mindset so that we can focus on what we want over the long term, it results will be life-changing. But to do so, we all need to learn to rely on, you know, the things that are near and dear to our heart. We have to rely on ourselves to do the work. So why is this important in the area of grief and burnout? (laughs) I'm glad you asked. Because our ability to recover quickly 
and bounce back from tragedy is connected to our mental strength prior to that event. In other words, whatever your mental uh, strength is prior to the event, it kind of dictates how you're going to handle or how uh, deeply or what your journey probably would look like when you go through the grieving process. So all of us are different. And I'm not saying that we can't come back or, you know, we can, we can't come back from the things when our minds are, are not built up. I'm not saying that, but it certainly can be more difficult. So understanding the mind is so important, just even the basics. And I was just thinking about many moments in my life where tragedy came and how I was able to overcome it. But then I began to think about how was my mental strength before the thing happened. And it really shed light on the depth of my resilience in each case, though, I know for a fact that if my prayer life and faith were not as strong at the time that my son passed away, it would have taken me much longer to even get to the point that I am right now. I'm able to talk about it. I'm able to encourage other people with my story. And I wouldn't have been there had my mental strength been in a different place. My mind was not as strong when I lost my mom as when, you know, I lost my son. And I truly suffered years of anguish, trying to bounce back for a long time and didn't know why. And you may say, well, you know why? Because your mom died. <laughs> but it was not that easy to connect the dots for me, especially several years after several years had passed. My mom passed away in 2004, but I was unknowingly dealing with it several years later. And you know, the period of time, you know, that period of time that someone will, will say you should be over it by now. <laughs> For instance, you should be over your mom passing by 2012. You should be over it in 10 years. You should be over it. It's 15 years. You should be over it by now. But I realized that grief is a mysterious thing and everybody's journey is different. But the good news is that we can work each day so that our minds can have the ability to help us push through the pain even before than we've ever done before. Sometimes the inability to strengthen our minds comes down to limiting beliefs about who you are, what you're worth, even how you're meant to behave. And those limiting beliefs are incredibly destructive, if I could say that, largely, largely because we often don't realize that they're affecting us. They kind of sit quietly in our conscious brains and it gradually prevents us from fulfilling our full potential and often even getting through some of the difficult times in our life. But more than that, it makes us unhappy. And they give us a sense of pessimism, if you will, that can negatively color everything that we do in our life. And these beliefs act as your reference point, right? And they inform every decision and opinion you make. So they form your uh, internal operating system. <laughs> In other words, every feeling, every thought, and every experience that you have will effectively flow out of these beliefs. And if you don't replace them with positive ones, then you won't be able to get the most out of your life or enjoy it um, or even get some, through some of the tough times that come. Sometimes we begin to act so strong, 
even in our toughest times, is because we have this limiting belief in the back of our mind somewhere telling us that this often imaginary, we have this imaginary image that we have to uphold and it will somehow be, it will somehow, I guess, be tarnished if you allow people to see the real you, the real hurt, the real pain of that situation. So we continue to act normal and as best as we can to other people so they won't be alerted <laughs> to the destruction that's really happening on the inside of us. And I lived this several times and I was recently talking to my older brother and was disclosing much of what I had never spoken to anyone in my family. And he was so shocked that I was telling him all of these struggles that I had mentally, um, even when I was going through uh, the death of um, our loved ones, my mom, my son, even through my divorce. And he never knew. <laughs> he never knew. And honestly, our conversation gave me a new level of freedom. Why? Because it also brought home the fact that I created this narrative in my head of what I thought others expected of me. And each time tragedy hit my life, I began living out this narrative of I have to be strong, right? And it was all in my head that people, you know, it was all in my head really that people wouldn't understand or they would think less of me. It was just an awful mental state that I had placed myself in. <laughs> I did it to myself. And so the good news, though, is that the brain is a wonderful and powerful organ in our bodies, and it allows us to learn and unlearn the things that we need by uh, replacing those negative things and those negative thoughts uh, with positive reality. Because mental strength is diminished when we, su when we succumb to limiting belief. This incredible fact means that it's entirely possible to transform the way you think, to reset that operating system, as it were, to live a happier and more fulfilled life, even in your grief or healing journey. So I gave you a personal example, but allow me to make it a little bit more practical um, a little further and give you an example of what it means by limiting belief and how it can show up and we don't even know it. Let's say you're in a relationship that makes you unhappy. It really doesn't matter, you know, but you know it won't provide you fulfillment and you're unhappy, right? But you stay there anyway. Why? Because you feel it's the best that you're going to get. You have this limiting belief that this is the best you're going to get. And you think that if you terminate the relationship, you'll end up lonely and loveless and, you know, and, but this lack of esteem means that you don't think that you can get better. And you effectively think that you aren't worth more than that. And this then leads you to make some terrible mistakes. And some people, you know, would even stay in an abusive relationship because they don't feel that they will find any better. And that's how our mind had been programmed for whatever reason. But a core, a core component of mental strength and growth lies in removing all of those thought patterns that we have picked up when we were young, when we were growing up in our environments. And these were just programmed into us some kind of way, right? And when we learn to remove and re reinstall, if I'm talking about a computer, we remove things, we reinstall things. But when we, 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 when we reinstall those different thoughts and beliefs is when we start to come into our true 
autonomy as, you know, control of our own minds. And they will constantly, you know, they will constantly find fault with the world. These thoughts will always find fault with the world and ask why it's so difficult. It's because we didn't build our minds up before the pain of that situation, before the divorce, before you lost that loved one, before the sickness, before the tragedy, we did not build our minds up. So understanding the power of thoughts is the first step, one of the first steps in developing mental strength because toxic thoughts eventually become toxic behaviors. Much of what we can do to train our mind for mental strength, it lies in our daily practice and what we do every single day. And learning to let go of those limiting beliefs can be, it can be very difficult. (laughs) Trust me, I know a very difficult thing to develop, but it's also one of the most valuable and important things to conquer if we really want to reset our minds and live and live with a new positivity and a new determination. And unfortunately, many of us define ourselves by our past experiences and then we allow them to color and guide our future behaviors our future uh, judgments and our future responses right so if you had a traumatic experience in your past then this can stay with you right and it can cause you to feel as though you are helpless in changing your thoughts and your surrounding uh, that situation. And if you are to move on with a positive mindset, we have to clear that emotional baggage first. There's a book called Who Switched Off My Brain by Dr. Carolyn Leaf. And she described what happened to the brain when we entertain toxic thoughts. And she goes on to explain toxic thinking translates into stress in our bodies. It can even impair us not only mentally and emotionally, but physically with heart problems, immune system issues, and digestive issues. And in this book, she talks about 12 major areas in our life that is often affected when we have these toxic and limiting beliefs. So whether or not the person, the relationship, or the possession is gone, we can learn and grow from that experience. It's something called CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy. And it basically consists of identifying the negative thoughts you have and then replacing them with more positive ones. And it goes back to that book, Who Switched Off My Brain? So while we should not bury or ignore painful emotions, it's really important to embrace them and then seek help when we need to and get access to the best resources that we can learn to move on in healthy ways. Affirmations are something that I've used also in retraining my brain and it's effective in our whole plan. This is not the only thing, but it is effective in our whole plan of what we do every day to strengthen our minds. So I've used cards, I've used sticky notes on my mirror and on my door, anywhere to keep those positive thoughts in front of me and in my head. And therefore a constant reminder of what I desire in my life. And of course, this work will not, you know, it won't it won't work if your mind is is, is not in a receptive state. And so when your mind is in, in a receptive state and you can receive everything that you've written on those cards and those sticky notes, and just remember they're not just arbitrary things to say. There are real things 
that you want to believe now, these are positive things that you want to embed into your, your brain and in your mind and your thoughts. So affirmations work, but they have to be repeated and they have to be seen over and over again so that our subconscious can really get the message loud and clear. <laughs> you know, don't just write them, say them out loud. And you can do these things if you have identified a limiting belief and want to get rid of it. So this is just one way, but while they while they may be just a little of comfort at first, it might not be really comforting at first when you really start doing affirmations, but over time you can find that they become habitual and replace your negative thoughts with per with permanent positive thoughts. And I say all of this to help you understand that there are things that you can do. You don't have to feel hopeless and helpless. There are things that you can do that will help you let go of those negative feelings, those negative memories and experiences that are currently shaping your beliefs in a negative way, which then in turn makes it very hard for you to stand or withstand any type of hardship because you'll revert back to that negative um, emotion that prevents you from moving on in a positive way. So the key is to do this in a healthy way so that you can continue your healing journey and prepare yourself for the difficult events that may happen in the future. Let me encourage you today. It doesn't matter where you are right now in your mental toughness journey. Just start where you are and improve from there. It doesn't really matter about the past or how you are able to deal with certain things. Now you have a baseline so that you can improve, right? Why do we really want a mindset reset though? It's because it ultimately brings us peace, peace in our minds, peace in our situations, peace to be able to stand in the face of our struggles. And Apostle Paul puts it this way in the Amplified Version of Philippians 4, verses 8 and 9. He says this, Finally, believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good report. If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things, center them on your mind and implant them in your heart. And the things which you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things in daily life. And the God, who is the source of peace and well-being, will be with you. There is a new you, but the mind doesn't know it because it still thinks with the old program. So I encourage everyone who is listening that as you begin to think about those good things, even in your darkest times, that the peace of God would overtake you and strengthen you in every single area of your life in every single day. I thank God now for knowing the end of a thing before the beginning of it and how he makes everything beautiful in its own time. So I declare that God will keep you in his perfect peace as your mind stays on him in Jesus' name. So what can we take away from this episode? One powerful thing is to think about all of those things that are shaping your emotions and your thoughts without you even being aware of them. 
Think about your environment and the thoughts and the beliefs that you tell yourselves on a regular basis. And remember that we don't, we do this so that when hard times come, we will have some positive mental deposits to pull from that can help us along the way. None of this means that the journey will not be hard, but it does mean that when we build our minds up before the difficult times in life, that we think we will never make it through. We can pull from those already stored up positive mental deposits that will help us in our emotional journey and our healing journey. For the believers out there, I'm not saying that prayer is not a large part of what we do to survive emotionally. But when we add other practical tools and resources to our arsenal, we are putting action behind our prayers. Faith without works is dead. Amen. So make mind reset a part of your daily practice. With this, we have come to the end of today's episode, and I hope you had a great time listening. I want to thank you all for joining me right here every Friday at 6 p.m. So be sure to leave your reviews and tell me what struck you most about this episode. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss out on any new releases. Also, please just share this episode in this podcast with as many people as you can so that they can join in on this Restore My Soul movement. And then lastly, I invite you to follow me, Princess Millens, on all social media channels. Well, that's my time, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you.